Okay, good evening. Um, today is Thursday, June 2nd. It's approximately uh, 6.32 uh, p.m. And we'll begin the Murray City Planning Commission uh, meeting for today. Um, want to uh, welcome all that have, that have chosen to attend. Um, I'll quickly introduce the commission members that are, that are present um, and those that are excused. We have uh, Commissioner Travis Ney, which is excused, who is excused. We have Commissioner Ned Hacker, who is, who is, uh, is attending. Commissioner Lisa Mokiewicz, uh, Vice Chair Jake Pearson, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Marm Patterson, who is, a, who is here, and Commissioner Michael Richards, who is here as well. Um, like to request that all cell phones be put on silent. Um, if you need to take a phone call, we would ask you to uh, step out of the step out of the room during the meeting and take it out in the hallway. Um, our agenda that we have, uh, we have five items on the agenda. The first is to um, approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Um, our second uh, is is a disclosure of any conflicts of interest. And then an approval of fine and facts, which actually we don't have fine and facts in the previous meeting, so we won't be doing that. Um, and then a, a review and subdivision, conditional use permit and subdivision review for uh, Addison Vista subdivision and uh, the Wyatt, uh, which is a new condominium project. Uh, we want to, I want to uh, disclose the meeting is being recorded and, and all comments are on record. Um, this is a public meeting. When it's, uh, if you're the applicant or if, if you are a member of the public and you'd like to, to make, a, make comments, we ask you during when you, at the assigned time to come to the podium at my right on the north wall uh, to speak clearly and state your name and your address. Um, if you're uh, for public comment, we ask to, to, to limit it to three to five minutes. Um, so at this point, we'll, we'll move on and uh, want to uh, discuss the, the minutes from our, our meeting that was held. Actually, I believe we're gonna be, the, the meeting, the, the, the minutes we're discussing are from the meeting that was held on Thursday, May 5th. Um, commission, for the commissioners, are there any changes or, 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 uh, or adaptions requested for these minutes? No. no. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve these minutes. Um, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the meeting that I did not attend. But they Very were well good. Done. We have a motion from Commissioner Malkiewicz to approve the, the minutes from the meeting of Thursday, May 5th. Is there a second? All right. But done. Well, it, it was a great meeting. You guys really missed out. Um, so a second by, by Commissioner Richards. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That motion is passed. Um, for the commissioners, you've, you've reviewed the, uh, you've had a chance to review the items of business before us. Are there any uh, conflicts of interest? No. no. Okay. None noted. Um, as, as mentioned, we don't we will not be approving any findings of fact from our previous meeting, and we'll move straight into the uh, the conditional use permit and subdivision reviews. Uh, the first one is being presented by Susan Nixon. Uh, Susan, we'll turn the time over to you. Thank you. All right. So this application is for Addison Vista subdivision. It's located at 5700 South on 800 West. The request is for a residential infill, which is conditional use, and also preliminary and final subdivision review. Uh, the property is on the west side of 800 West, <clears throat> as you can see in the aerial. And it is currently in the R18 zone. This property was changed uh, by the City Council. The zoning was changed last December from A1 to R18 with the intention of subdividing the property and so now the applicant has come back to um, receive approval for a residential infill and preliminary and final subdivision. The property is a 1.62 acres and in the R18 zone. Um, years ago we realized that Murray was getting depleted on larger parcels of property in the valley so we adopted this residential infill uh, section 17.58 in the zoning code that would allow for smaller parcels, less than two acres, to be developed. Um, the reasoning for that is obviously simply just it, it would be hard to have a public road, public improvements, and still make it feasible to develop lots. So um, part of the residential infill, the Land Use Authority, Planning Commission, 
um, does have the authority to vary those right-of-way improvements, such as reducing the public right-of-way from 49 feet to possibly 42 feet. And by doing that, we would make the sidewalk a little larger and eliminate the park strip. That's one of the options that can do. Um, and the commission has seen a couple of these, two or three in the last six months. So it's becoming more common because again, we're getting depleted of large parcels of property. Anyway, so that's just kind of a little history on the residential infill. So the applica applicant, um, this is the subdivision plat. It, there are six lots. The um, underlying zoning is R18, which requires 8,000 square foot minimum lot size. They are requesting the um, residential infill for, only for the rear setback. They do want to maintain the R18 setback, front setback of 25 feet, and the rear setback of 20 feet. And this is in order to have the proper width at the setback. So each lot must have at least 80 feet at the front setback for an interior lot and 90 feet on a corner. So in order to do that, they, they needed to have that 25 foot front setback. So really the only um, setback for the infill is the rear yard 20 feet. So I've got a little chart here that does show the lots and the uh, future um, address. All the lots have at least 8,000 square feet and they range from 8,000 square feet to just over 13,000. And all the lots do meet the front 25 foot setback and 20 foot rear and all the uh, side yard. So eight minimum, 20 total, and then 20 total on, excuse me, 20 on the corner side and eight for the interior. This um, plan shows, I just kind of threw this in to show, I thought it was kind of nice that he actually put this in. Um, Mr. Colissimo, the applicant has, I will say he has really crossed his T's and dotted his, and his I's. And we've looked at several iterations of this plan and he's really um, fine-tuned it, I'll say that. So this plan um, does show there are going to be two street lights, and that is shown as uh, number six on the plan. And then he also has planned where the drive approach, driveways for each slot will be, and the city engineer has reviewed those and is okay with that. The, so the residential infill, this proposal does include a 42-foot right-of-way which includes 25 feet of hard surface, or the actual road is 25 feet, six feet of sidewalk, and then two and a half feet of curb and gutter for a total of four, uh, 42 feet. There will be no park strip. He has also planned for a six foot vinyl fence to be at the northwest and south side of the property. And the fencing um, would just need to meet fence regulations. Six feet is the maximum and then the, be reduced at the uh, long 800 west to uh, either four or three foot uh, maximum height. When um, properties of at least one acre are developed, state law and Murray City Code requires that they meet what we call LID, so low impact development. They must retain a certain percentage of water on the site before it drains into the storm drain. And this plan does show it was very creative, um, the storm drain plan, the LID, to incorporate green, green space to have the water drain. And then it will go into this uh, so, uh, system, city system. And that is going to go up through lot six to the north and then will uh, drain into the city system. Let's see. So based on the application and our code for 1758, the residential infill and the R18 uh, section 17100, and reviewing the plans, staff is recommending approval for the conditional use for residential infill and preliminary and final subdivision based on the 10 conditions uh, as set forth above that you can see on the screen. Great. And I'm <coughs> happy to answer any questions. I did, we did mail out notices. We did not receive any public com comments. Right. Any questions for staff? Is the applicant here? I'm assuming he'd like to make a, make some comments. So Susan, thank you very much. Please remember to state your name and address, and you, as you as you uh, begin. 
Yes, my name is Joe Colosimo, 11745 South, Taitlin Rose Lane, Draper, Utah. Um, Susan did a great job. I don't think I have anything to add. Um, the reason it's so well defined is because she's so easy to work with and she made it real simple for me. So kudos to her. Are you willing to comply with the 10 conditions? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Great. Let's, uh, at this point, are there, I should actually ask if there's any questions from the commission for the applicant. Okay. Um, I'd like to open up the time for public comment on this uh, on this application this time then. Zach, have we, or Susan, we had anything come in electronically at all? No, none. Okay. Okay. See, not seeing any public comment. I think we can close the public comment for this uh, for this application. Um, and I, unless there's a, a discussion, I'm willing to entertain a motion. I, I would like to just say something about the park strip. I think Susan presented it really well, and I appreciate. It. So it's not much needed to be said, but I just want you know the public to know that we take it serious when we lose any green green space, and we're concerned about it. But we understand the need for this infill and this land, and so like Susan. Explained the need very well, and so this is a project that fits that need. So, yeah, great presentation. Okay, uh, well, uh, very noted. Um, any other comments or, or discussion amongst the commission? Okay, happy to entertain a motion if there is one. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that the Planning Commission approve conditional use permit for residential infill and grant preliminary and final subdivision approval for the Addison Vista subdivision on the property address. 5700 south 800 west subject to conditions 1 through 10 very well we have a we have a um, we have a motion for approval by commissioner hacker for to approve a conditional use permit permit for the residential infill and grant preliminary and final subdivision approval for the addison vista subdivision uh, the property located at 5700 south 800 west subject to the, to the 10 conditions is there a second i'll second very well seconded by by commissioner patterson um, Susan, will you, will you connect a, 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 a roll call vote? Yes. Um, Ms. Mulkavich. Yes. Mr. Pearson. Yes. Mr. Richards. Yes. And Mr. Hacker. Yes. And Ms. Patterson. Yes. And Chair Lowry. Yes. Okay. The motion is passed. Mr. Colissimo, thank you for coming and welcome to Murray. Thank Best of luck on your, on your project. Okay, moving on to item number five. Um, this is the Wyatt, uh, which is a, a design review and pr preliminary condo uh, subdivision approval and Zach is presenting. Good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, like you said, this is a di design review and preliminary condo subdivision approval. Uh, the property address is 4930 and 4938 South Center Street. It's located out here. So these are the center court apartments to the north, Vine Street, and uh, the Vine apartments going into the south. Uh, it is in the MCCD zone, which is the Murray City Center District zone, um, which allows for um, multifamily residential located uh, on these properties. Uh, the two combined properties together are 0.33 acres. Um, and I apologize, I don't know what that is in square feet at the moment. Um, but they are proposing a 50,000 uh, square foot building with 26 uh, individual units. Uh, the applicant is proposing for those to be um, owner occupied units, uh, hence the, per the condo subdivision approval um, or the preliminary approval uh, request for that. So um, I wanted to start off by showing what the proposal looked like before the MCCD design review committee. Um, this was what was presented at that time. Um, the, the MCCD design review committee had some concerns with um, the blank frontages over here on the south side. And then also um, there were a number of different materials used. Um, this was supposed to be like wood planks, um, wood plank siding, um, some brick mixed in, some stucco mixed in. And um, overall, it was um, they asked for it to be a little bit more simplified. Didn't ask for anything too crazy, like change the entire type of architecture that it is. Um, so with that, this is the updated plan. Um, so everything here in kind of the maroon color is all uh, brick. Uh, this came as a result of working with um, some of the residents nearby, uh, working, um, he had, he held a neighborhood uh, meeting 
um, on his own and, and discussed this with some of the um, residents in the area. He also simplified um, some of the color scheme, so it just is a little more uniform, a little more uh, clean. Here's kind of a, another side, front angle of it. Um, I, I was really impressed with this side. Um, he really improved on the side there, um, in, incorporating additional materials and things like that to, to that south side to uh, help alleviate, at least when you're driving past on Bind Street or something, you don't just see white stucco, you see kind of a mix of material there. Um, <clears throat> so this is the front elevation. Again, um, a mix of stucco um, with some uh, metal accents on top and uh, brick uh, en encompassing largely the majority of the, of the building. Here again, this one I wanted to show um, mostly for this part. So that's center court apartments right there. Um, so you kind of get an idea. This is largely shorter. This go does go up uh, a little bit higher, not taller than, I don't think taller than center court, but goes to about the same height as center court right there at the end. But largely the building is lower than center court apartments. So you can expect that it's not going to be taller than that. Uh, also, this is a approximately three and a half story uh, unit building. So there is a sub, a sub floor with units um, and then three above that. So it, it, it does um, provide for those eyes on the street. You actually will have double the eyes on, on the street there. You have the kind of that lower grade where people can see out. And then you also kind of have that raised balcony where people will be able to see and um, be seen there on the street walking, um, biking, whatever, what have you. So uh, going into more of the site design uh, aspects. So uh, the MCCD does require a seven foot sidewalk, a five foot park strip. The applicant has shown that here um, located. So this is your seven foot sidewalk, um, five foot lands, uh, park strip with uh, trees spread throughout. And um, he is showing here a proposed bike rack. I put PC recommend because we don't have a standard that says that you have to have X number of bike racks per X number of feet of, of frontage or anything like that. We don't have any of those standards. So uh, for both the bike racks and the benches, um, typically it's what uh, the planning commission feels is adequate. Um, staff believes that uh, the proposed uh, one bike rack and one bench in this area for, for this amount of frontage is more than adequate. Uh, open uh, amenity space is required at 15% or 2,156 square feet. Uh, he has provided 27,000, which is about 38, almost 3,900 square feet. Uh, that is mixed between the actual open space on the building and mixed in with the uh, amenity space inside the building. Um, so landscape plan, it's not super detailed, um, but there's not a lot to be seen in here. Uh, he is putting the uh, required amount of trees and he will have to conform with uh, the number of bushes and stuff that are required as part of uh, 17.68 of the landscaping ordinance too. So uh, those will all be included in that. So now moving on to uh, the floor plans. Uh, I, I don't typically always show the floor plans of every of all the buildings, but I wanted to kind of address the parking in this area as well. So um, there will be, so this is the garage entrance. So you would enter in here and you have these mechanically stacked parking spaces located here. And then you have two ADA spaces located here. Um, I will get into the mechanical stacked parking here in a moment. Um, so I'll go over the rest of this first and then we'll get to that. So um, going uh, subgrade, you have these four uh, two bedroom, two bathroom units um, on, on the site. Then you move up to the second floor, which is only raised a little bit higher. And you have an additional four on, on this um, south side. I don't know why my, there we go. Uh, four on this south side. And you have accesses from both the south and from the uh, east. 
Okay, now we'll get into the stacked parking. So um, I showed this at the MCCD design review committee a little bit. The, these are some pictures that the applicant provided to me to kind of show what this looks like in practice. So here are some, um, so you pull up to one of these bays here and it, it will not automatically, there's, there's a thing that you kind of touch when you enter in the parking structure that will um, like a key fob. Sorry, I'm still kind of sick. So I'm, my brain's fuzzy. So if I stumble over words, I apologize. You're doing great. Um, so yeah, you use a key fob and it'll open up a bay, a bay for you so you can pull in and park. Uh, from what I understand from Mr. Um, Oliver is that he is maxing out the size that he can get. So I believe he said it was a suburban would be able to fit into one of these um, easily. So I, um, pretty well, I'll let him speak to that here in, the, in, a, in a few minutes, but so the combo lift that he's showing. So these, these are like, like I mentioned the operating concept. So it can either done with an app on your phone, a key fob, or there is a, a, I think this will also be included in it. So you can actually punch in or hit your key fob and it will pull your car out when you're ready to move over to it. So this is what it's going to look like where I kind of mentioned in the pre-meeting, there is a subgrade level of, of parking um, that will be below where they pull in um, that really isn't accessed by anything. It's just used for parking. And then you have where you pull your vehicle in and then one above that. So, and then it moves it around and I'll show you some cool videos here in a second. Um, sliding doors and materials, these are all interior. Uh, so the type of material that you would be driving upon um, that your car will sit on top of. And then also the doors that are, that, that they can be blacked out um, or semi see-through or see-through. Okay, so now I'll get into some of the um, fun YouTube stuff. So let me, I apologize. Um, the sound only really comes from this TV. There's not really a lot of talking, so it's just chill music, I guess. So um, so this is kind of how it works. This one doesn't even have chill music. I apologize. So you can see that one car moved down and over, and then it allows for this car to pull in. And I don't remember what happens next. I think the white car wants to get out. Yeah, there we go. I win. So yeah, white car gets to, so they enter their key fob or whatever, um, and then they can pull out. So it'll move the car around. So then this guy pulls up and wants to park there apparently, because he doesn't like the space the white one came out of. Um, so it'll actually move that green car over and slide it around. So, and now we get to watch a, an ad for Verbo which is not allowed in this city, just so you know. You cannot rent your house for short-term rentals. Um, sorry. Let's see. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that I really liked in here. I think this one will work, actually. Okay, I remember what this one is now. So let me. So there's one that kind of fits a little bit better. I thought it did. Okay, so this is, is probably more along the lines of what we're looking at as, as far as uh, how it would probably operate. Is it coming through okay over there? Is it jittery or anything? Okay.
All right. So yeah, um, th those were just a couple of the videos. Um, in your digital packet, I provided a link, uh, the same link to that playlist of different videos of it. Um, so if you guys want to see more videos of how that works, uh, there's some other systems in there too that look really cool to see. Um, m m by all means, go have go have a watch. They're kind of fun. Um, as Jared kind of mentioned in the pre-meeting, I think this would only be the second one in the Valley if, if this gets constructed. Um, so that's pretty exciting um, to have something like that. Land costs keep going up um, in the Valley. So these more innovative um, approaches will, will definitely, I think we'll see more of them as time goes on. So um, now I'll move on to uh, just the next, the next parts of the, the floor plan. So this goes above the uh, the parking areas. So you'll have an additional uh, five units that go um, on that next floor above that with an additional four here. And then here you get into the fitness room and an outside deck area. On the fourth floor plan, you have another five uh, up on the, the north side with a flex space with, with a deck again. And then the four that are, have been pretty consistent throughout. And then lastly, they do have a rooftop amenity and it is facing, um, it does face away from the existing single family residential. Um, there's a rooftop deck that faces uh, west and a, a social area that faces uh, kind of that west area that doesn't have any balcony or anything uh, that would encroach on that single family neighborhood to the, to the east. <clears throat> so um, I feel like I've skimmed through this really fast. The M like I said, the MCCD Design Review Committee went through um, the recently adopted uh, design guidelines. I don't know if you guys have seen them since they've been adopted, so we should probably get you copies of those uh, just so you have them on hand. Um, but with uh, based on the analysis for this design review application and the prelim preliminary subdivision plans, uh, we do believe that uh, the development will com that complies with uh, the subdivision ordi ordinance in Title 7 16. Uh, the uh, condominium projects in Chapter 17.62, we have a whole ordinance just on condominium projects. And uh, also, it is in harmony with the MCCD zone with uh, the appropriate residential development and in harmony with the proposed, uh, the, with the purpose and intent of the general plan and design guidelines. It should say design guidelines in there, but it doesn't. All right, so staff is recommending that the planning commission grant the design review approval and uh, preliminary subdivision approval for the Wyatt uh, subject to these nine conditions. Mm -hmm. So I have now talked your ears off. Mm -hmm. So please shoot questions at me. I have two questions. The Please. two ADA parking stalls, where were those at? Yeah. Are they in the same parking area? Uh, they are not part of the uh, the mechanical, but they are in there. So they so as you, this oh, is the I ground see. level. Yep, yeah. this is ground level. You would turn in and there's the two ADA spaces. Okay, thank you. And then the, the height. I'm confused of the height regulation section. Sure. Do you know why I'm confused or should I tell you? Why? Please you tell me. You smile like you knew. No, no, please tell me. <laughs> so it says that for buildings that are located within 60 feet of residential district, height limit is height is limited to 50 feet, which that's the case, correct? Okay. Wait, no, they are not. They are not. They are not within that Parking. distance. Um, I see. So... It would have to be. They're outside. You're, yeah, they I are see, outside right. this, and and so what's the height limit then? What is their height limit? Um, 135 oh, okay. feet. I see. Yes. So they're well below that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. That's I, I mean, since we're talking about height, we should clarify that a little bit, right? So when we say well below, they're with the highest point is 40. Highest point is 55 feet, and on average, it's 41 feet. Mm -hmm. And two-story house in the neighborhood would be about 35 feet. 35 feet. -ish, so it yeah. should be pretty close to if someone across the street built a two-story house. It's similar. Correct. Not similar, but close. Close to. Yeah. Enough with the <clears throat> chimney, you probably wouldn't notice. 
So Zach, just seven. clarification. So 26 units require 39 spaces. We have 39 in the building mm -hmm. and there's still parking um, that the developer is allowed by uh, setbacks of the structure to allow more parking on the street. That's encouraged, yes. But, yep, we want okay. to encourage on-street parking. It's not counted towards, he can't reserve that parking for his development. Right. That is public right. But there parking. was discussion in the packet about yes. recommending the on-street parking being for a short period of time so yeah. that it allows for deliveries. Is Correct. that, because he can't control on-street parking, is we, he We will probably be working with the city engineer to develop uh, like a 30 minute loading zone um, in at least one of those spaces, if not, Two, um, and that would be the city putting the sign in. Dana? Yes. Yep. Any other questions for staff? I I had a couple. Okay. I turned my page though. <clears throat> uh, street furniture. Mm -hmm. um, you said in the presentation there aren't any um, limits, or max or minimum, on the street furniture. If we just ask for street furniture. It, yes. Yep. Okay. So then that needs to be because part of my questioning what was going to be what is the street furniture, but you've now said a bike rack and a bench, and we feel like that's adequate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then my other question is about this really fancy lift system. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool that you won the first. I like it. Um, but then also I think of, you know, that video, first thing I think is my kids. Get out of the car, get out of the car. Don't go back to the car. I can see myself yelling at them. Does it regulate if there are humans in the area or not, because we get all get out, my daughter would run back for a backpack. The gate would close. It's in there. <laughs> I, I think I, I'm not sure exactly how. I mean, that's probably a worst case scenario, and I would assume that if you lived there, it, you'd it, probably it would happen daily. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm assuming if you lived there, you'd probably. I mean, you, you you'd probably get your kids out of the car probably before even pulling it in. You, you I, I, I think you would develop a system to address That's it. how adventurous you are, I guess. But it still um, makes me nervous because if a kid gets in there and I say, you know, for some reason the door closes and then the mechanism starts picking up and moving around, you have a child outside the car. That, well, that, I wonder, that might a, be a, a question for the applicant. I'm sure he's investigated the, the system. Yeah, I, I would assume so. Make or break what we do today. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Any other questions for staff? <laughs> no. no. Oh, all right, questions? Zach. Very well done. Good. Thank you. One for Elisa, but I'll ask her later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want you to ask now, actually. No. Um, no. Do you have any kids that you want to get rid of? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just Our throw days. them in there. Yes. You can change it to a kid storage system there and just remove days. the parking. Which... <laughs> Is the okay. applicant present? All right. We'd like please come forward. If you'd like make a presentation. Remember to state your name and your address, and we'll have some questions for you. I'm sure. Jonathan Oliver. Hmm. Address is. Sorry, not Murray. Um, love the area, but uh, it's 1400 Morning Vista Road, Lehigh, Utah, 84043. Do you have anything you want to add to the presentation the staff uh, made for you? No, I'll, Zach did a fantastic job. He's been great to work with. I've worked with uh, Susan in the past, and both of them are fantastic, and so is his assistant. So. Um, really, I can address whatever questions you have. But I, I, you need to address Commissioner Malkavis' concern about losing children <laughs> in sure. the car parking garage. Before you do that, actually, have you reviewed the nine <laughs> conditions and are you willing to 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 comply with them? Yes. yes Excellent. Sir. Great. Yeah. So the parking, um, you know, it's it's neat. There there's different parking systems that that we can purchase and we can utilize. Um, I chose the, the company that we're going with because it's, well, they're based in Germany, which kind of poses a little bit of question or, or um, hiccup during the, uh, you know, the recent crisis. But uh, we're, we're still on the docket. You know, everything should just be fine to be built and shipped over here. Um, they've been around for since 1962. They have a fantastic safety record. Um, like my boys, I have two myself. So um, that, that hit, hits home. Um, and so they, they do have redundancies in the systems built. Uh, they have 1.25 million stalls um, in India alone already um, that they've installed. So um, went with them because, you know, the other system that is in Salt Lake City, I believe it was CW Urban or Wadsworth that, that used that. Um, fantastic building. Unfortunately, that company uh, went out of business or went, excuse me, I should say, 
to be specific, um, filed chapter seven um, in March. So we're, we're using a company that has been around a while and hopefully will be for a while longer. There's redundancies as far as backup generators in case, you know, um, if, if you wanna get your car out, need to get a car out, um, if there's a fire, there, there's lots of redundancies in there. Um, and I should add that it's, it's my 36th development in, um, in my time developing, um, second one in Murray. It's, you, it's been fantastic to work with this city in the past and I um, appreciate your time now. Um, it just so happened that finally um, my boys started paying attention, wanting to be a part. So I um, named this after my oldest son, the Wyatt. The only downside is that now he, he walks up to people and says, hi, I am the Wyatt now. So, um, but uh, and my other son, Noah, we're, he's being gracious and patient for, for his building to come along. So, um, yeah. Any other questions from the, from the commission for, uh, for the applicant? I do have a question about the, the parking stalls. So as mentioned, you are getting the, the biggest parking stalls available. What vehicles will not fit in there? You know, I, I can follow up with the manufacturer on that. Um, they have mentioned that there could be, I believe it is a Tahoe that could fit in there. It's um, the, the biggest and the heaviest that they have is what we're, we're putting in. Um, on the ends, it, and it's, there will be two systems, the same system, but, but uh, you can only go seven wide. We have 13 wide. Um, and then so it'll be two systems, um, 10 feet wide on the ends, and in the middle will be nine feet wide. So wider than a traditional parking stall um, and a little bit longer too at 20 feet instead of 18 or, or 19. Um, they, they can handle um, quite a bit of weight. They could also, and, and I should add, um, have um, charging stations in them as well. So we will have four of them be charging stations and they will move with the system. It's kind of neat how it does it. Um, and, you know, there, there is the, the ability to add them in the future as, as the need and demand comes. Um, how we, I guess I should mention, there will be one stall uh, reserved per resident, per owner, um, and then there will be a, um, uh, a purchase system in, involved in the CCNRs um, to, to pick up the, the additional stalls. We did widen the street. Um, we chose to do that just, you know, to be good Good stewards of the community and the neighborhood and just to make it better for for the residents and, and future owners um, we are providing six on-street parking stalls those are not counted towards ours we won't reserve those and as Zach said um, we are planning at least two of them to be Amazon delivery type um, 10 30 minute um, stalls so I would like to ask another question yeah. about the lifting system. Sure. It's um, how does someone that's interested, a potential buyer, get notified of the limitations of the parking stalls? Great question. That will be um, upfront, you know, from the beginning. That will, uh, we're actually going to, uh, well, we'll work with um, the, the police department. We still haven't reached out to them just to ask if it would be. Um, uh, advisable to have this but the and I'll touch on I'll answer that in just a second but the um, parking garage where we want it to be visible um, through the street that'll be a, a neat amenity as you're walking by just uh, to, to have the have it be glass or see-through so you can see into it and see out just for safety as well um, as far as the uh, the parking stalls themselves um, well, I'm, I just keep thinking about the kids, you know, th there are motion sensors and, and it, you have to be, um, well, a lot of them in uh, Europe and, and Asia, they don't even have doors. So, which is interesting, but we will for sure have doors, um, and plexiglass see-through doors, um, better aesthetic, a little bit more cost, um, but just, um, safer. In, you know, overall, and um, you can retrieve your car within 60, 60 seconds um, with the system that we have. 
So that will be pretty quick. They can access it through their app while they're in their living room before they even walk down. Um, and then it does, you know, it can um, recognize if there's someone nearby um, and trying to open another door or whatever, and it, it won't allow it. So, and if you might ask the question one more time and I can address that directly. Just how a potential buyer would be aware of the limitations on the stalls so I wouldn't buy a, a house, then my car wouldn't fit in the Correct, stall. yep. So we would, uh, it would have the dimensions and the weight um, in there um, specifically for uh, in the uh, selling offering. So, so the length is that's the longest length that this company produces. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you said nineteen twenty feet. Uh, twenty feet. So that would prevent some heavy duty trucks. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you know that's that's kind of what we've we've had to to do work with here and. Um, I shouldn't discriminate against against those people. Um, I'm I'm one of those uh, owners as well, but um, we don't <clears throat> foresee um, as as we can um, the residents there. You know, of the 26 owners, um, that's just not not a possibility, yeah, unfortunately. Right. Um, so, yeah, please. So also uh, to, to your point, Ms. Milkevich, uh, so a lot of times when you look at condo listings like this, like especially um, because my dream is to live in City Creek. Um, so it's uh, on those listings, it tells you how many parking spaces you're allocated um, and if you're allowed to purchase more um, in a lot of other bigger cities like San Francisco and things where parking just isn't there. They 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 tell you those things up front. Um, and then um, kind of to your point, Mr. Richards, um, I don't think the clientele that would probably want to live in this type of unit will probably own a truck like that. Um, <laughs> but that's just my biased opinion. Um, but th yeah, th just just to kind of address those two, just, um, yeah. yeah great. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank unless you have anything else to add, we appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll open up the public comment portion at this time. Um, do we have anything that's come in uh, electronically? Okay, for those that from the public, we ask you to remember to, to state your name and your address, and we would like would request you keep your comments to approximately five minutes. Oh, thank you. I'm Janice Strobel. I live on the street just to, next to Center Street where the Wyatt will be built. Um, and I happen to be able to be one of the neighbors that met with Mr. Oliver over the phone, and I really appreciate the time he took to um, talk with us and the efforts he's put into um, adding brick to the exterior of the building. Um, and I recognize that this development complies with what is um, approved for MCCD. I am really grateful that um, there was the one change in the MCCD that allows for uh, um, d mixed use development. Well, it doesn't have to be mixed use because it's on Center Street. So I'm really grateful that that got uh, changed. And, and yet um, I also was there at the, um, MCCD design review meeting and um, Mr. Oliver and I got to meet his son Wyatt there and so I recognized that that must be Noah sitting next to Wyatt. Hi. Um, and they mentioned the idea of the another project just around the corner that could be called the Noah, which would then also require mixed use because of it being on Vine Street. The only thing I want to say, and I recognize that this is not something that the Planning Commission has control over, but you can be cognizant of it in that right now in our neighborhood within the one block radius the vine apartments hasn't been done yet <clears throat> this apartment complex uh, condos which i'm grateful for too um will will not i mean will take a while before it's done and there could be a chance that the noise gets started prior to you know really operational um use of these new developments and that's that's gonna really um be interesting for our city to see 
what happens with all that happening in that small area, given that it even acknowledges in this, um, <clears throat> in the uh, packet, that Center Street is a narrow street. All of the streets there are narrow. We're the, we're the um, oldest residential neighborhood in the city. Um, and we don't have any two-story homes on the other side of, <laughs> of the Wyatt, where the Wyatt will be built. But anyway, um, so it's just going to be interesting to see what all of this new zoning that it got put in place with MCCD, what kind of impact we're going to experience um, on Atwood, which is the next major street going east. Um, and Vine Street, just in the last two years, uh, neighbors have noticed a real difference in the ability to get onto Vine Street when they're on Atwood or to try to get onto Atwood from Vine during rush hours. And um, it it's going to be really interesting, especially when the fine apartments gets built. I mean, I try to go over to Jones Court where the, you know, here, where the um, city hall is and um, the post office and, or when I'm coming from home from work and I'm on Vine and I want to turn onto Wasatch, there's many times there's someone wanting to turn onto Jones Court when I'm wanting to turn onto Wasatch. It's a very close um, situation there. So we're going to get a lot more traffic and it, it, that's just not that's not going to change because of the amount of units that are getting added to this area so i'm i just uh it'll be interesting to see what our hindsight tells us after it's all done so thank you thank you for your comments I'm old fashioned. I'm also getting over a cold, so this microphone is now officially contaminated. Uh, three points. Do you mind uh, seeing your name and address for the record? Oh, yeah. Richard Parks. I live in 4887 South Center Street. Thank you. So I'm right there. Um, I was talking to a developer a couple of weeks ago, and I ran this scenario past him, and that was so I want, at some point, in this valley, we're going to have more condo units and apartments and there are people to move into them. And then what happens? And I said, well, rents will go down, right? He said, yeah. It'll, be, it'll become cheaper to rent than to buy a house. He said, yeah. And I said, that's going to drive house property values down and what people can get for the houses, right? And he said, yes. So property values are going to take a hit if we don't have some mechanisms on a broader scale, not just this project sounds great, but if you add 12 more in there, I, th I think we have an issue. Point two is, you know, the great character and stability of Murray. That's why I'm here. My kids are here. My grandkids are here. Um, communities that have a lot of apartments and condos are destabilized. I give you fire clay. And number three, I don't know how we take a step back and take a broader look. Um, and so my suggestion would be is that we ask the mayor and, and the council and you guys to approve a moratorium on any new apartment and condo projects until we get some kind of idea of what's gonna to happen to us. And um, I don't know how that works or how that happens, but thanks for your time. Thank you for your comments, appreciate them. Zach, did we have any comments that came in in writing at all? Okay. Good deal. Okay. Not seeing any additional um, public comment. I think we can close the public comment period and uh, open it up to some questions for Zach from the, the commission, if there are any. Well, I'll address just a couple, uh, just the... Um, so regarding a moratorium, you guys will remember back in February of 2021, so long ago, but so recent, um, <laughs> there was a development on all mixed use zoning, uh, MCCD, MU, uh, TOD, uh, while we evaluated the infrastructure and reevaluated the zones <clears throat> writ large. 
that was from February until September, August, August of, of 2021. So that's already been done. Um, we did evaluate that. We made changes. Uh, I believe we reduced the density in this area, right? Um, so we have reduced the density on the east side of State Street. Um, also, I believe uh, Mr. Parks made a mention of, you know, speaking to the mayor and the city council. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there is a... Uh, a survey that has been that is being distributed right now um, to the whole of the city. Um, well, not to the whole of the city. Let me caveat that. It, it, it is a what's the word I'm looking for? A random survey. Thank you. Um, a random survey uh, that would be going to random people in Murray City uh, that is asking these specific questions. You know, um, it's largely focused more on 48th and State. Uh, but there are larger questions about the MCCD uh, writ large. So, um, do you mind sharing um, the, the the master plan um, that process that the city has gone through and will go through again in the in the future? Yeah. So the general plan uh, that was adopted in 2017 uh, it, it does call for the city center district uh, to um, continue to grow and flourish and reinvestment in that area. Um, there are strategies and goals and, and, um, creating a mixed use, uh, mixed use development pattern, um, in this area. Um, I apologize. I, I'm blanking out on a lot of it. Um, you know, livable, li mm -hmm. livable, li ah, livable cities, uh, things of that nature as well. And the public input comments, how, how the public can have comment on, on that planning process. Uh, yeah, we received hundreds, if not thousands of, of comments uh, during that process at that time. Um, and we take those into account as the, as those, not into account, that's what guides us moving in, in general plan development. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Smode, while that general plan was being developed, did we do traffic studies with predictions with the current zoning and then again during the moratorium in february 21 we looked at traffic with predictions with the there was zoning. some traffic yeah there was some traffic studies um that were conducted um i think there were also some parking analysis um uh for the mccd specifically for that area um for the mccd because that's largely where the moratorium was coming from was from the um mccd and 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 those zones so do you um, feel like this project conforms with the with that plan? Uh, we wouldn't bring it forward if if it didn't. Um, it, it meets all the regulations that were changed. Um, this wasn't vested prior to any of those ordinance changes, so it's all under these new changes that were adopted as part of it. And this pro the, the, the plan is not a plan that stays in place for a hundred years. How long Correct. does it usually stay in place? For? Uh, five to ten, well, ten to fifteen years typically. Okay. We like to get it done within ten. And, and so when the, and so we're how how many years are we into it now? About, about halfway. Set. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Yeah. Parks, it'd be great to have your input during that process that will guide that will guide the plan uh, you know, the, in the subsequent years. To uh, to add to that line, I thought I I personally am happy that this isn't going to be what'd you say a hundred and some thirty five feet tall. Hundred and thirty five feet tall. I'm very happy that it's going to be forty one on average. Yeah. So. Zach, can you speak to the comment about um, having the, I mean, I guess he was mentioning that housing prices could go down when we have too much of um, house housing. And I, I think my understanding is that's not the situation the Valley's in. It, right now, no, we're not in that. We're not in that predicament at all. And I don't see that changing for the next probably 10 to 15 years, at least minimum, if we're aggressive. Um, in providing a lot of housing. Um, I mean, but yes, that's, that's part of what happens. That's basic supply and demand. You oversupply, your demand shrinks. Um, you don't have enough supply, your demand increases. Um, that kind of thing. I'm not an, e an economist. So, um, but that's, that's basic pretty much so yeah if if the market gets flooded with um with 
a, a lot of housing. It doesn't matter what type of housing it is. It could be single family. It could be apartments. It could be condos. Um, it could be shacks on the side of the river. It doesn't matter what type of housing you have. If it gets built, then yes, eventually, if people have places to live, they're not going to spend as much money to buy new places to live. Um, so that's kind of just the basics of it yeah. is, is kind of what I'm Mr. Smallwood, I find that discussion a little bit ironic because I yesterday asked a builder on my street, and I had the same kind of discussion, said I was a little concerned that we we're all so excited to meet the need for housing that maybe we we're moving so fast. And he said that his projections say that we won't meet the need at the current rate. Who knows whose projections are correct? But then I also heard on the radio another discussion in which they were saying the building rates have drastically slowed and we're way behind on the need. Right. That that's that that's been I'm walking a thin line on politics here, so I'll I'll be very careful. But um with the raising interest rates, it's making it harder for people to purchase into into those into even starter homes, really at this point. So the demand is still there, especially in this valley, but now it's a little bit more it's even more expensive to try to get into a house where we already have an inflated um, inflated housing prices. Um, so there's just, it, it's a hard balancing act. The next few months are probably gonna be really ugly. Um, demand will probably continue to rise for quite some time, especially in this valley. I think, uh, I haven't looked at recent stats, but the last one that I looked at that we're at a 2000 home shortage every year um, statewide, so um, that could exacerbate or, you know, in, in more of these developed areas where people do want to live. Um, you know, if, if people want, never mind, I'm not gonna say that. Um, so it's, <laughs> um, I don't think anyone has a crystal ball. We don't, right. We don't have a crystal ball, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, and I, 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 think, to that. I don't think anyone has a crystal ball and is able to project what's going to happen. I mean, we can, we can, there's, there's been, um, published reports that, uh, that, that, uh, investment in new housing has plummeted as interest rates have gone up. Um, and so, you know, I think this is something that is, is there's, we've been in a very low interest rate environment, had incredible demand and, and, and people try to meet it at the same time, you know, developers and builders, they, they're, this is their livelihood. And, and as the market changes, they'll, their strategy will change too. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, this isn't the forum for us to debate, you know, if we're, if uh, you know, public policy, it's the forum to, to talk about if a, if a project complies with Correct. ordinances and, and zoning. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Zach? All right. Yeah. Great job. Thank, Thank appreciate you. it. Um, is there any discussion, uh, amongst the, amongst the, the commission concerning this application? Okay, seeing none, um, I will entertain a motion, if there is one. Well, I would just um, would want to make two comments. One, this is preliminary, so there will be an opportunity for the public to come back and also to, when this goes um, before the city council, there's another, oh, this won't, when it will final, yeah, for final, you would be able to go um, and make your opinions known and your thoughts known for the city council as well. Um, but I do want to commend the developer for meeting with the neighborhood, um, for being open to their suggestions, for following the suggestions the de design review committee had. Um, I think that that um, really brought an even better project to us by being open to those things. And so um, I think that was a, a great step. Um, but I um, want to make a motion that we grant design review approval and preliminary subdivision approval for the Wyatt condominium subdivision on the properties address 4930 and 4938 South State Center Street, subject to the nine conditions in the packet. Great, thank you very much. We have a motion from Commissioner Patterson to grant the Planning Commission to grant design review approval and preliminary subdivision approval for the Wyatt Condominium Subdivision on the properties located at 4930 and 4938 South Center Street, subject to the nine conditions listed. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, it's been seconded by Commissioner Mokavich. Zach, will you do a roll call vote? 
Yeah, Commissioner Patterson? Yes. Commissioner Milkevich? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Commissioner Hacker? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. <clears throat> and Chair Lowry? Yes. Okay, very good. The motion has passed. Um, welcome to Marie. We appreciate uh, echoing Commissioner Patterson's um, uh, words. We appreciate the, your, your, the way you've worked with the residents and, and uh, hope you'll continue to do so and wish you best of luck in your project. And Wyatt, congratulations. Um, <laughs> we're excited for you guys. Um, so uh, very good. Uh, with that, um, we don't have any other agenda items unless anyone on the commission has anything they would like to, to bring forward at this time. I think we can entertain a motion to adjourn if that if that's acceptable to all. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn then? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. At, uh, at uh, what is it about? 732. 7, Thanks. 732. A motion from Commissioner Hackert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Pearson. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much.